I've been preaching a series of sermons on the last two Wednesdays on evangelism. And uh, this is the work that God has given the church, is to evangelize, is to win other people for Jesus. Tonight, I'm still preaching in that direction, but I'm preaching out of the book of Jeremiah. If you have your, your Bibles, open your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 8. And uh, we'll read verse 19, and then we'll read verse 20 to verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19, and then Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20 to verse 22. I've entitled this sermon, Harvest Before Winter. And... Um, you know, when you really think about eternity and you really think about people, where they're going to spend all eternity, that makes you think. That puts you to think. Because uh, we wish that everybody would go to heaven. But we know for a fact that it's not going to be like that. And people have an eternal soul. And, and uh, poor people need to be saved. They have to give their lives to Jesus. But we pray to God that God would save the lost. Amen. And, and uh, God save our loved ones. God save people. Can you say amen? But here in this portion of scripture that I'm going to read. And uh, preaching on evangelism. Reaching the lost. Preaching. Telling them the word of God. But here in Jeremiah is dealing with people that God has been trying to reach. He's been trying to reach these people. But they have ignored his calling. And so here in the Bible, it gives us a picture about people that, are try that God is trying to save. God is trying to save these people. And so I, I want you to follow along in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19. Because these are people that God loves and God wants to save them. But in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19, it says like this. This is Jeremiah. Listen to the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people from a far country. Is not the Lord is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images with foreign idols? Then in verse 20 it says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people I am hurt. I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then? Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? And this is Jeremiah calling upon God and calling upon those people. And Jeremiah is pleading with God to save his people. And uh, these words that, that we read here in the Bible is Jeremiah's his emotions. He says, I'm astonished. Astonishment has took, taken a hold of me. He's, he's, uh, he, he doesn't understand why the people are not responding to God. And, he's, and, he sees, and he sees the anguish of the people. And he sees that people, people need to get saved. And people need to give their life to Jesus. But they're going to die in their sin. These people are going to die in their sin unless God intervenes. And uh, this is where we live also. That, uh, how many of the world is dying in sin? They're dying in sin. They're rejecting God. And often, often they keep on rejecting what God wants to give them. God wants to save them. God wants to deliver. God wants to heal. God wants to restore. That's the God that we serve. But lots of times, people keep on rejecting God. And here we have Jeremiah. He's, he's hard. He has a heart that is broken. He has a heart that is broken because these are God's people. These are his friends. These are his neighbors. These are his people and he's broken in in his heart i don't know about you but have you ever sat down with somebody and you know that he's blind you know that doesn't want to respond 
your heart breaks. Your heart breaks. It breaks because, because you want them seen saved. You want, you want them to know Jesus. You want them to come to salvation. And a lot of times, because they, they reject or they're ignorant and they don't want to hear that many times, it breaks your heart. Because you love those people. And it breaks your heart. And so here's Jeremiah, very passionate. Very passionate of his prayer to God. Very passionate of what he's writing here. And uh, because he's asking God to save them. You know, one of the things about Gilead, where you're reading the scripture, is there no bomb in Gilead? One of the things about Gilead, they were famous. This, this area of that country was famous for its healing medicine. And so Jeremiah is using a metaphor question where he says, Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no recovery for health of the daughter of my people? And, and obviously he's just giving us a picture that the physician and the ultimate physician and divine physician is only God. But then that area and that place, Gilead, it was well known for physicians. It was well known for their medicine. But here, Jeremiah says, is there no bomb in Gilead? Meaning, speaking about God. Is there no God in Israel? Is there no God that can, that can, that, that can heal these people? Is there no God that, that this medicine could be applied to them if they will just obey God? Because the people were refusing this medicine. They were refusing God. They were refusing to be healed. These are people that have self-inflicted their wounds themselves. How I many know people like that? They have inflicted their own wounds. But yet in, in, in that, they're still not saved. They're still not calling upon the God, the, the, the physician, the healer, whom the only one that can heal is Jesus Christ. And then he says, summer is ended and we are not saved. Saying this, the summer fruit has passed. They have refused God and they refuse to accept God and whatever they're going through, it has not been God's fault. It has not been anything that God has done against them. They themselves have brought this upon themselves. And uh, so this, this, this passage of scripture is Jeremiah say, saying, he says, the prophets have come, ministers have come, and they have offered you the, the most uh, richest offers of God's mercy. They've offered you instructions. They've given of their time. They have, uh, have spoken into your heart, but yet you refuse the mercy. You, re you refuse the heavenly balm. That balm means the medicine. You refuse the heavenly medicine. Even though it's at hand, you refuse it. And here Jeremiah is comparing the physicians that were there to the great physician, meaning God. That if they would just come to God, God could heal them and God could restore them and God could save them. But they were not paying attention. They were ignoring God. They would keep on ignoring God. And, and, and the grace was there. Grace was there. The grace to save and to deliver, it was there. The forgiveness of sin, it was there. And the same thing today. I know Christ Jesus, he already tasted death for us. He already suffered in the cross for us. He already went through, 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 the, through his own sacrifice to give us grace, to save us, that we can come to him. And the same thing is happening here in this portion of scripture. They have strayed away from God. These are God's people. They know God. They supposed to know God. But now they have become idolaters. 
Now they're carving wood and they're carving these this this wood and and they kneel down to the to this piece of wood and and they call it a god and and they depend upon that god and they trust that god to help them with their problems and that's why the bible says god could never heal them god could never save them because they're not putting their trust in god they're putting their trust in idols they're putting their trust in in and uh, whatever the world's got to offer and that's why he says the end of summer has come in other words that the harvest is past the summer has ended and we are not saved the end of summer fruit has passed in other words there's a season you know i, I just want to say this night that whenever god brings a season of salvation into anybody's life they have to seize that time. You have to seize that time because those seasons that come your way may never come back. And you have to take those, those times, those, those seasons that come to your life. Sometimes these are indefinite times. By that I mean it's not going to come back. You know, we have different seasons. We know that every, every season, there's an activity going on in every season. We have basketball. That's basketball is a season. Football is a season. And there's things that are happening in that season. Everybody's waiting to, to see the basketball game. It's a season of basketball. It's a season of also when football season comes. Everybody's looking forward to seeing the football games. It's a, it's a, it's a season. But in this portion of Scripture... All, what, what Jeremiah was talking about, summer, summer has come, and we're not saved. He's talking about a season, season, when the sun is shining, everything is warm. I mean, sometimes when it gets cold right here in Victorville, I want the sun to come out. I got to get warmed up, amen. But... Uh, I remember as a kid, I looked forward to summer. I was always looking forward to summer. First of all, we're not going to be going to school. <laughs> and then I had all my buddies, my friends. Now we can hang out. Now we can, after, you know, in the afternoon, we could go and play basketball, play football. But we were all just getting together. We're not worried about school. And I will always be looking forward to summer. And in the same way, summer in the, this passage of Scripture means it's a favorable time. It's a good time. And uh, in this favorable time and good time, when summer comes, you have to take advantage. And he's talking about salvation. You have to take advantage of that season. This man named uh, Thomas Kemp wrote this. And he's talking about speaking when the heart is tender towards God. Lose not your confidence of making progress towards the things of the Spirit. You still have time. The hour is not yet come. In other words, he says, don't lose your confidence. If you're in, in, in a time right now that God is speaking to your heart and you're tender to him, make that progress. Make it because it's summertime. My times and in, 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 um, where I grew up, summertime was a time to go and work in the fields. And uh, what you would harvest in the summertime there in Imperial Valley was the watermelon. Everybody would go and, and uh, you know, everybody was asking other friends, come on, let's go work and let's go start pitching watermelons. And, uh, and then there was melons. And I worked in the melons. And then there was the tomatoes. Picking tomatoes. Handle worked there too. Picking tomatoes. And uh, that was a harvest time. It was harvest time. And that was a season where... And it usually wasn't like in June, July, August, and around that summertime. And, uh, and it was, there was a lot of activity going on in the, in, the, in the fields. 
working in the fields. So, so, but when winter comes, when winter comes in the Imperial Valley, you don't see activity. You don't see, you don't see people working in the fields. Why? Because winter has come and has made those fields turn brown, turn brown. And I was just looking at some pictures of uh, today. I was looking at some pictures of the wheat. If wheat is not picked up during the summer, and if they don't pick it up when they should pick it up, and I saw a picture of the wheat, even though it's white and gold, beautiful when, when it's time to pick it up, it was brown, dead, because winter had come. Winter comes. They say, they, and I, I was reading about this, um, they say the climate in the valley, this is in Pearl Valley, has the longest growing season for lettuce in the country, allowing harvesting lettuce to harvest lettuce from April to November. He says it's the longest growing season in the country when it comes to uh, uh, working in the lettuce. My father-in-law used to work in the lettuce. He said, but when winter comes, December, on February, that's it. The harvest has passed. It's already passed. Winter, in some places, you can, and, and um, I just want, I'm going somewhere with this message. But, you know, you've seen it in the news. You've seen it when there was the the blizzard, winter blizzards that are in different cities, you know, and you see them uh, with the shovel and shoveling snows to get their cars out of their snow, and, and, you, and you see the wind, and, and you see this, uh, the blizzards coming, and, and you look at that, and, uh, and it says, wow, that's one place I would never want to live. That's me. I'm a summer guy, and I would never want to live in Chicago and those places up there. I, I couldn't handle it. But then you look in the news, and you see how these, uh, there, these are places where there's sometimes they get to 20 below zero. It gets real cold. And when it gets real cold, that's it. There's no activity. People are inside the house. People are stuck inside the house. They ain't coming out. They ain't coming out. And then when summer comes, then finally they start, activity starts. Now there's more activity than it was in the winter. So the same thing I'm talking about when Jeremiah says, summer has come. And you didn't get saved. Time to get saved was during summer. Winter is coming, and you're still not saved. And these are people that Jeremiah was praying for, that Jeremiah felt for, and he wanted them to be saved. And this is exactly the same thing. That the, the, the meaning that I want to bring out in this sermon is that when it's summertime, it means that the Spirit of God is touching your life. It's touching your life. The opportunity to come to God is, is there. You don't, you're, you're not cold towards God. You're not uh, feeling uh, cold-hearted towards God. You're ready, ready to listen, ready to hear from God. The heart is warm. When decisions have to be made towards God, you have no problems. But if, the, but if winter comes, listen, if winter catches you and you didn't make the decisions that you should have made, be made, you should have been making, what's going to happen is that when winter comes, it's like a blanket of cold that just come and fills your heart. And the next thing you know, you're not as sensitive as you used to be. You're not warm to God like you used to be. Your heart has gotten cold. It has gotten cold towards God. It's not the same no more. 
You're not humble no more. You're not thinking about God no more. Because the sin blankets have come into your heart. These, the snow, the hail of sin blankets have come into your heart. You know, one of the things about over there in the valley, I remember during the winter times, and, uh, and, and, and I'm talking about the lettuce back in the day, when there, it gets cold, when it would get cold there, the moisture that's in the fields would turn to ice. And you could see these fields that they had icicles. They had ice on top of the on top of the crops. Because then the winter has already come. And uh, and they would go in, in the field and never mind the never mind the the ice. They would work in the ice. They want to make sure that they're gonna pick up the lettuce. But the same thing happens. If people don't respond to God, when God is warming their souls, warming their hearts, that moisture becomes frozen water, frozen water, ice. And when the gospel is preached, they're unmoved by the gospel, unmoved by the word of God. When winter comes in many places, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's it. Many countries where there's winter, that's it. They have to just wait till summer comes. I believe this. I believe that when God is after you and God is dealing with you and your heart is warm, you're going to respond to God. But if your heart is cold and God is still looking for you, you won't respond. This is one of the things that we have to be careful with, and this is what Jeremiah was talking about, is that they be, have become very insensitive to God. Even though God wanted to save them, even though God wanted to bring good into their lives, they become insensitive to God. And in one portion of Scripture, in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7, he's talking about these uh, migratory birds and he says in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7, Even the stork in the heavens knows her appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift, and the swallow. He says, um, Observe the time of their coming, but my people do not know the judgment of God. He says, These migratory birds that come, the stork, you know, when it's talking about the stork, you guys, you know, the stork, is that you've seen that that uh, bird that stands on one leg and's got a big old large beak? He says the stork, the turtle dove, the doves, the turtle dove, and he's talking about like pigeons and the swallow. He's talking about this little little bird that with fork tail with a fork tail and and eats insects and it's, and it's very a small little bird he says these birds know their time they know when to migrate they know when to leave and they know when to come he says these birds have more sense than you guys time comes to you and you don't see the time has come What he's asking, he says, you need to turn around. Take a, take a right turn. Come back to God. Come back. You know, when you get lost, I got lost one time. I told this brother, won't mention his name, but me and this brother was taking me to the LAX so I was going to fly out to South America. And this is late at night, and we got lost. And we ended up in Watts. Late at night, I said, we got to get out of here, brother. And he was testing, uh, you know, that um, GPS. That was back in the day when they were just barely coming out. 
I don't know. It was a lady talking. Got us lost. We ended up in Watts. Man, I was happy when we got when, when we got back on the freeway and we came back and it took me to the uh, to the airport. But when you get lost, if you're really sincere with God, you don't want to be lost. You want to get back in track. You want to get back to where you were before. Because your heart is saying you're going in the wrong direction. You're not going in the right direction. You need to get back and get back on track. And when your heart is still warm, you're in summer. The summer is, is you're still, your heart is still warm. You, you can feel God just speaking to you. Your ears are open. Your eyes are open. The, the, the wanting to come back to church is there. Or wanting to just hear a, a, a message, or or wanting to just somebody come and tell me that I uh, give me an invitation to come to church. Your heart's open in the summertime. I know exactly what I'm preaching tonight because there was a summertime in my life, and in this summertime, it was like uh, in, in that little town where I grew up. I would hear preaching. There was this group of, 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 of older men. And uh, they would have their their tent and they would set it up in that little town and, and they would start preaching the gospel and, and they start praying for people for, for deliverance and for healing. And um, it was like they were planting a seed in that little town. Before them, and I was talking to this one brother that uh, he grew up in that uh, with with me in that town. He says, "Do you remember that older man?" He says, "Do you remember that older man, this white man that, that you know he was he was an older tall man and he had these little booklets and he would go on in town and and be passing out these booklets. Do you remember him?" He says, "Yeah, I remember him." He says, "Well, it's like he began to do this on his own, and then we begin to hear." that the tent meetings that they were having and then finally we came and we heard the gospel and they invited us to come to church and we got saved but he says but do you still remember he said it was God preparing us it was God getting us ready for the revival that was going to come into that little town that's true I said that's true it was just one seed after another, one seed after another, until the, those that had sowed the seed then came the reaping of that seed, which were us in that church. But you see, that was, that was our summer. I remember hear, hearing those um, preachings in that tent. And there was this one younger guy that would his father was involved in that group and I would tell him and I tell him he says why don't you sit down or then in, in, in my in my front lawn or in my mother's house he says tell me what's going on over there what is it that's going on and uh, he really didn't know how to explain it but my heart was open I wanted to find out what was going on in those tents I remember getting, getting some of my friends and, and going to Calexico because they had the tent over there. And then we, I just parked and I would just listen to the preaching and listen to what they were saying because my heart was tender. My heart, my, it was my summer. My heart was warm. I, could, I just wanted to know about God. I didn't know about God. And finally, when revival when, when, when everybody started getting saved there in that little town and we started going to this church in El Central, and then everything changed. But I want you to know something. It, uh, it was our summer. And I'm telling you, when summer has come, you got to respond to that summer. you got to respond to that time. Because that time might never come. Might never come. But I remember before I even got saved. I remember all. I remember that tent meeting. I remember that older man passing out tracks. It all started there. It all started there. The seeds were planted. See what I'm saying this evening. 
is what Jeremiah was saying. He says these these uh, birds, these migratory birds, they know their time. In the winter, they'll go f find a place where it's warm, summertime. Then they migrate back. He says they know. He says, but my people don't. In the valley, I'm, I, I know that I'm talking a lot about the valley, but that's where I grew up, okay? But there's snowbirds in the valley. There's snowbirds in Arizona. You know what a snowbird is? A, they call them snowbirds, okay? These are migratory birds. They're humans. <laughs> they come from, from North America, the places where it's real cold, and they come to the valley where it's warm during the winter. Or they come to over there to Arizona during the winter. And they come there. And, they, and there they stay until the winter's over and they go back home. And they call them snowbirds. You'll see them. And, and see where they're, where they're camping out. And they're called snowbirds. Where here, what I'm trying to get across this evening is that there is a time, there is a season that you got to seize. Opportunities come. Opportunities come during the summer where your heart is open, where, where summer is coming. When spring comes, it's, you're going to summer and your heart's open. And you have to seize those moments. And the greatest fear, the greatest fear could be somebody missing the timing of God. The timing of God. That's one of the things that I never want to miss. I never want to miss the timing of God. I didn't miss it when I got saved, and I don't want to miss it Every time that God brings up opportunity for me to do something for him, I don't want to miss that time. The same thing goes with you. Your summer, your summer means opportunities are coming your way with God. And when they come with God, with, and you know it's God, your heart's warm, seize that moment. Sometimes, now, thank God, thank God that there's opportunities sometimes that you can miss that I can look back and I can look back and says, man, I missed an opportunity to win this soul. I missed it. I can tell you that I have missed it. I have missed opportunities of winning somebody for Jesus. I have missed opportunities. The good news is, that there's still the opportunities. The good news is there's still summer. There's still a summer that can come your way. There's still a summer that can come your way. And you can seize that time for your life. And once you seize that time that comes your way, once you seize that time, that time is going to bring a miracle. If you seize that time, Jeremiah was talking to these people. He says, look, look, I prayed for you. God's been sending preachers. God's been sending prophets. Summer has passed and you're still not saved. And he was talking about your opportunities. You didn't seize those opportunities. Now, thank God this, this night that there's opportunities that need to be seized. They need to be seized. They need to be seized. If you're listening right now, there are opportunities right now that need to be seized. Maybe you missed that opportunity. Maybe you had your heart that was warm. Maybe you were sensitive to God. Maybe you were thinking about God. Maybe those things, maybe you wanted to know more about God. But that time passed you. But I'm telling you right now, this is your time right now. Get 
Take a hold of the time that God's bringing to you right now. And I'm talking about those that are not saved yet. Or those that need to be saved. You can't waste opportunities that come your way to be saved. It's the greatest blessing to be saved. It is the greatest thing that could ever happen to anybody to be saved. Anybody that's been saved for a long time, he can look back and says, there's no regrets. Hey, but you could have done this and you could have had this and you could have done this. No, no, there's no regrets. I thank God that I got saved. There's no regrets. Thank God that God paid attention to me. Thank God that there was a summer in my life where my heart was warm and I opened my heart to God. And I seized that moment and I got saved. Thank God for that. But there's a moment for you tonight that you have to seize it right now. And, and, and this opportunity is, is, uh, is, has come to your way. Barnabas, Barnabas, the blind man, Barnabas, he sensed Jesus was coming. He heard people calling upon Jesus. And he stopped and, and he began to cry out, Son of David, have mercy upon me. The Bible says he cried out so loud that Jesus Christ stopped. He stopped. And he said, bring him to me. And then when, he, when, he, when they brought him, the Bible says that when they brought him, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And the Bible says, and Jesus says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He sees that moment. He sees that moment. He couldn't see, but now he sees. Zacchaeus, his whole family got saved. Salvation has come into this house. Who is this Zacchaeus? He was a tax collector. He climbed this tree to get, to get a better look at Jesus. And when Jesus sees him, he says, get down, Zacchaeus. I want to come over your house. When he went over his house, Jesus starts talking. And he felt the conviction, and he says, I'll give half of my goods to the poor. And I have taken anything from anyone, and by false accusations, I'll restore fourfold. He was a tax collector, and he says, and then Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. He sees that moment. He sees that moment. There's many stories in the Bible where people seize that moment. And because they seize that moment, Either they were healed, the woman with the issue of blood, she was healed. Zacchaeus, he was, he was saved. Blind Arnimaeus received his sight. People in the Bible, when they felt that God was talking to them, that God was coming near them, they seized that moment. And when they seized that moment, the miracle happened. People got healed. This was their summer. Their summer was here. Jesus said, say not for four months and then cometh harvest. The harvest is already white. It's already here. Saying, what he was saying is, summer is already here. It's already here. And so I'm talking tonight because I believe we, we know a lot of people that we have talked to, witnessed to, and they're still waiting. I believe that our church is an evangelistic church. And we witness. And we give a testimony. And we tell people about Jesus. But sometimes we can feel like Jeremiah. Summer, the summer fruit has passed. And, and sometimes we can feel this like like Jeremiah says, God, then the only thing I can do is pray. I've given them a witness. I've told them about you. I've done my best, God, to reach others for you. And sometimes, God, they don't respond. Even though you want to save them, even though you want to heal them, then God then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray. 
And I'm going to ask God to give me fruit. Because God says that we need to bear fruit. And, and, and if I'm not bearing fruit, that really gets to me, okay? And that should get to you too. Because if you're a Christian, you say, well, I want to bear fruit. I want to see fruit in my church that I was the one that won that soul. There has to be that. There has to be that in our hearts. But I know sometimes that even though you give your testimony to people, you have told them who you were before you were saved and how you came to Jesus and you have told them the benefits of your salvation and nevertheless, they're not paying attention they're not paying attention. So then what are you going to do? Pray. I believe prayer works. I believe that God can bring a summer to a person where that person begins to hear from God and begins to think about God and begins to get to a place of repentance and say, you know what, God? I'm lost and I need to be saved I believe that prayer can change a person's heart. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that if I pray for someone, I believe that God's going to answer me. If I believe that my heart's broken for somebody and they don't want to respond, I know who to call. I know who to pray for, too. I know how to pray. And I know where I'm going to zero in. And I'm going to zero in, and I'm going to believe God, God for their salvation. And I'm going to believe that God has the power to change a heart. I believe that. This is Jeremiah. He's calling upon God. He doesn't want those people lost. He knows it's coming. He knows that the consequences of sin is coming. Bob Babylonians are on their way to take them captives. And he knows that. And he's praying for them. And he's talking to them. He says, look at these, uh, these birds, these, uh, they, these migratory birds. They know their time. They, they have their own law. They have their own time, time schedule. They, they know when to go and they know when to come. He says they, they operate in their instincts. And you have not heard. You have not paid attention. They've been telling you. They've been prophets. They've been telling you. And you do not pay attention. So now what he does is, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that God have mercy upon us. You know, tonight, I've been preaching a series of uh, uh, some sermons on evangelism to reach the lost. But then when people don't want to receive the word, it's time to just pray for them and let God do what he wants to do. Can you say amen? amen. 